Mudslinging and politics. Unfortunately, they often go hand in hand. But there is no room for racist and or homophobic threats during an election campaign. Keely Rogers, with some of the hatred that's being spewed out as Torontonians get ready to head to the polls in the civic election. But first, a warning, some of the messages described in the story are offensive. Those kind of inequitative and hateful comments should have no place in this city. It was undoubtedly the lowest point in last night's debate at York Memorial Collegiate. A member of the audience yelling, quote, go home, Olivia, back to China. Once this is taken care of, we'll get back to the proceedings. It's not the first time I receive uh, racist comments, and I certainly heard that last night, and I saw it again today. Yes. Again today, less than 24 hours later, this sign greeted Chow at a downtown debate. The jihad sign downstairs. The what, sorry? The jihad sign downstairs. Oh, Did you see that? The insensitive, inappropriate, and hateful remarks aren't new. They've been here since the, the election took off, that. embedding themselves as an unwelcome undertone. Some of the most racist comments I don't even want to repeat. Chow's digital director, Jennifer Hollett, has taken hundreds of hateful posts off Chow's Twitter and Facebook. Dealing with racist comments on social media for our team is like whack-a-mole. They just come up and you just have to knock them out. Sometimes people write a post in what they think a Chinese accent is. And it's not only Olivia Chow. Councillor Kristen Wong Tam has been targeted as well in this hate-laced letter mailed to City Hall. The language is uh, completely unacceptable, uh, language that's seeped in what I call vitriolic uh, hate. The councillor is running for re-election. This is the second letter she's received since June with words like ugly lesbian, I hope you get AIDS, and a derogatory N-word, which we won't repeat, that is often used for people with Japanese descent. In 2010, I couldn't say that I received anything that even came close to what I'm seeing today. And the big difference is now, four years later, um, there is a different attitude in terms of how people want to criticize uh, the policies. Um, they're not attacking the policies, they're just attacking people as individuals. Why do you think we're seeing racial undertones in this election? Um, I guess perhaps a couple of reasons. One of uh, them, we've seen uh, the mayor uh, making uh, comments about uh, black people. I saw him out for a minute. Leave me alone, man. They got five months for him. He has called Chinese uh, dogs. Those Oriental people work like dogs. So perhaps it's in, within this kind of political climate that uh, the small number of people who have these views uh, feel that they have the license to express them publicly. The person behind this letter and the person behind the incident at last night's debate identify themselves as Ford Nation supporters. I don't know who it was, but if they want to talk that way, they aren't part of this campaign. Wong Tam yeah, believes the solution to silencing all this hate is to get the mayoral candidates to speak up. Mayors take decisive action and they denounce uh, homophobic language, uh, racist attitude and slurs. Um, you know, the rest of the city will pretty much rally behind their leader. And today, all three of the top contenders did. It's unacceptable. Any slur issued by anybody in this city of that kind is unacceptable. I want to make it very, very clear. I don't condone that. And as for this letter sent to Councillor Wong Tam, well, she has brought it to the attention of Toronto Police. Keely Rogers, City News.